Now, if you're just tuning in, we are reviewing school resumption and finding ways to keep children safe without missing out so much on school activities. Now, remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Wayshow Africa one with the hashtag Wayshow, or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. We'll open a the phone line, but just for maybe one or two calls. Um, so, Timmy asked a question before we went on a break. Um, she's talked about training, training and retraining. Yes, trains. yeah, quickly. Then yes, I'll come, um, to, I'll come to Dr. Vera. Absolutely. Yes, on training is a continuous thing with NAPS. Mm -hmm. um, the school resume on the 18th. We already have a training scheduled for next um, next week Thursday, and that's uh, going to be handled by uh, personnel from the Ministry of Health and also uh, from the private sector too. We have uh, um, one of our very good doctor who is also a partner that will always. Uh, bring his team along for the training. In fact, the first, in the first training, we have to contact um, NCDC. If the NCDC appointed two of their officers to come and give us that uh, the on the train. Okay. okay. All right, let me come to Dr. Vera. Um, so we, talked, we touched a little bit about the preparedness of the school. Now, how feasible is it? Because I was thinking in my own small head, I'm thinking that maybe... Um, boarding houses are a bit safer because when the children go into the boarding houses, they're already locked up there. I mean, there's no going in, and going, at least my boarding house where my children go to, you know, <laughs> let me just speak for myself, you know, but um, daily runs, school runs, everyday run, how feasible is it, you know, day for you to be able to control um, COVID-19 spread for, you know, a day-to-day -day running of schools? And again, given that the, the, the cost for, for testing for COVID is quite expensive. Is there any miracle that can happen that maybe these children get a daily test or something as they come into class? Or how is it going to work? Temperature check. Just temperature check. But there are people that are asymptomatic. So, Dr. Vera. Okay. Thank you for the lovely... I'll start with the second one. Miracle. Okay. That's, that's, um, that's a question that I may not be able to answer because um, such miracles are a bit too difficult for us at this time. Mm -hmm. Right. So, what can we do? What can we do? I, like I, like I will always say that the most important thing is to educate the people. When I say educate the people, we're educating parents, we're educating teachers, we're educating support staff. I will tell you these are the most important staff. I, I've done a bit of a survey and I find that teachers are being trained, retrained, overtrained, but support staff are left you, you just come out and tell them, okay, this is what we're going to be doing. They have no idea. Some of them don't even believe. If, you, if you're on some Facebook group um, right now, you'll find that teachers are saying there is no COVID-19. Now, this is the kind of teacher who will teach children. I want to believe that these teachers may not be teachers under schools who are, who are um, registered private schools, like, approved yes. big schools. Nah, I'm just yes. giving that, that's just an assumption, right? Mm. But there are many teachers still who just say things on social media like there is no COVID-19. And then you're taking your child to that teacher. That teacher certainly would not social distance in class. That teacher definitely would not put on a mask and would not insist that, uh, okay, we agree that children... Um, I, I, I volunteer for Africa Pediatricians Foundation, and I work closely with medical doctors, pediatricians to be precise. And the advice is that children below 10 do not really need to wear... Mask. Mask. So that's yes. why yeah. the pediatricians will still tell you, keep the children at home. I mean, there is really no need for them to be in school. But of course, we need to look at things, looking at um, the education oh, nice. benefits, mm -hmm. the well-being benefits, the health benefits, and then make, um, and I believe that's why we're here on this call. So you're asking, what can we do? If we cannot do the, um, if we have trained the support staff well, the security man at the gate, who would know that the idea of checking temperature at the gate is not just to be seen by the cameras, mm. that I have checked this temperature. Mm -hmm. Some people do that, they don't even check to see if what you're reading is a 38.2. They don't even understand why they need to address that. A school security man, I was in Benin last week and um, I, I, I went for some school um, um, arrangements in Asaba and I got to Benin and I went to a particular school and the security man told a parent, the parent says, oh, I need to rush back now because I cannot um, come into your school. I'm not with my mask. 
And the security man said, Abi, until you go use my mask. Yes. Wow. So, I mean, that is the average. Yes. Oh, uh, so that, is the, that is the way the average <laughs> security man in the school will think. Same. Now, when I'm talking school, somebody, don't, don't sponsor my, my talk yet and say, oh, um, oh. Somebody, somebody in a school that um, tuition fee is like maybe um, 700,000, they may have taken out time, may, watch my words, may, are taking out time to speak to the security men. But how many schools have done that? If that man can think like that and tell a parent, tell me what that man would do for a child. If the child comes to the school without a mask and say, ah, oh yeah, take my own so that you can go into school. So this, this, we, 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 need to, we need to educate these people and let them understand that you are checking. You, you, you go out now, but you are adults. Mm -hmm. You go to hotels, you go to banks, they just check you. They don't even, you don't, I would always insist, can I see it? And I try to educate exactly. everyone. So what I always tell myself and people around me is simple. As much as you can, make sure you are educating the next person. Mm -hmm. So if they check, don't, don't make them understand that this is not formality. This is for a reason. Right. Absolutely. So also in my own house, I try to check my children every day mm. because I go out. I don't go out so much. I work from home right now. But in the past two weeks, I've been traveling. But when I come back, I simply just isolate in quotes with a simple cuff. I use my cup. I use my spoon. I don't want my children to be close to me in quotes. And so it will be so unfair for me to allow my children. I'm digressing, but let me touch something. I was mm. called in my children's school and Please, we are on site now, ma'am. We've done everything. We want you to come to school. I said, I'm not going to come. Now, people don't understand that beyond anything, I still want to protect the child in my child's class. Let me just assume, God forbid, that in my old trips, I caught the virus. Exactly. And I brought it to my own small house. Probably I've given it to one child in my, in my house. Child and that child goes to school to infect another person. So the, 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 the whole idea is we must be responsible. When you know that you have been exposed, keep your children at home. Absolutely. Now, I don't want to go into whether school should resume or not, because that's a different story altogether. If you want to ask my personal opinion on that, I would say not yet. Yeah. Somebody will now say, what do you want me to do? There are other questions that will come out, and we may try to answer if we can. But the truth is, at the end of the day, I always say, you just decide and ask yourself, what is really important to me? Hmm. So when children come into school, make sure they are checked. The school should check. Absolutely. The principal, everyone in the school should know. Teachers should know what to do. Absolutely. Now, to trainings so for teachers, what are we training them to do? Are we telling them to do, um, are, we, are we giving them ideas on how they can handle a child that shows some of those symptoms? Mm -hmm. Now, in our schools, the sick bay or the recovery room or the different names now, um, isolation centers, mm -hmm. are we sure that we have such, in all of the schools we have, let's I just say Lagos State, because Lagos State is the, the epicenter. We, we, can't ask we don't even have them in Lagos, Lagos, Lagos State, let alone other states. Of them. And then how many collaborations do we have with health centers around us or hospitals are around us that if a child begins to show signs today, what will some people still do not know what to do? So bottom line, so Dr. It, it, Vera it, James, it, it, is that <laughs> we are not ready yet. That is what you are saying in all summary. <laughs> my opinion. Let me come to <laughs> Okay. I'm going to throw uh, my question at... No, just one person. Uh, because we don't have time. Oh, okay. Can I comment okay. on what, Let me... yeah, you comment comment on what, what, uh, what uh, Dr. Dr. Vera said? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She, had, she had made a lot of points. Mm -hmm. where, however, Dr. Vera, if you're listening to me, yes, we, we are, it was said that this pandemic or this um, COVID-19 had come to be part of us. We don't know yes, when it's I going agree. to go. Are exactly. we going to say the school should be locked down, down till it, it, goes. it goes? We don't know when it's okay. going to be. So we have to live with it, okay. just I like every other country students are living with it. You want us to have a discussion on that? Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> let's leave that for another day. It's for another symposium. Dr. Vera, we are sure going to bring you. No, no, no. We are sure going to bring you back to have that conversation. <laughs> but because we don't have time, um, let me take some comments then. I see okay. you take hers. The temperature check, I agree. Most staff who check actually don't look at the readings. And this cuts across most public places. It seems like just a task. That's from, uh, the person did not drop their name. Is okay, take mine, is from take Idris. mine is from Idris, and he says, uh, we have to understand that kids must resume. 
kids must resume. Almost a year without learning is catastrophic to the future of our nation. Most people don't have access to online schools. Absolutely. Now, in terms of online no, schools, no, let me take, I was um, also going to ask then. him a question as Timmy, well. let me take your, your comments quickly. All right, so there's a comment here from Idowu, hmm. and Idowu says, a lot of parents have fear sending kids back to school. I hope there can be access to optional paths of learning based on choice. So I think this person is talking about online education. Hope there will be alternatives to physical resumption. Okay, there's another comment, um, Temi, from Ayo, Mrs. Ayo. Yes, the second one is from Ayo. And Mrs. Ayo says, my kids have gone back to school, and I must say that the schools are very strict on protocol. On protocol. So these are mixed reactions. So Let me just take one final comment. It says, um, core job of teachers is, to edu is education. So if the students are not able to take ownership of wearing the mask, teachers have more work to do. You know, do you agree with that? It, That's from Benson. Yes, I, I do. But teachers are doing that because, um, like I said, they went through a training. At least schools on the nerves, they mm -hmm. went through a training. And then they are um, expected to enforce it in school. And I must tell you, where you can get the best education about COVID is in an organized setting, That's like the, the school. Mm -hmm. The children at home, after two hours of virtual learning, they get tired of it. Mm -hmm. And then they, they start doing a lot of things. The commissioner said it. If you go on the street on a daily basis, go and look at the number of children that are out of school. Mm -hmm. Go and look at the number of children that are doing something else. The banditry we're talking about is being orchestrated because there's no, there, there's no school. Out school. They're out of school. And the, the pandemic is not really affecting children, just like the parents, like we have said. It's not mm -hmm. affecting them just like the adults. So if we have 0.8% being affected, what are we talking about? Why should we keep them at home and see them running around the, the street? Um, selling a lot of them are selling things on the street now. Which is also the affecting the development. <laughs> so if yeah. I may if I may step in here now, um, sir, I want to, I want you to clarify something between the private sector and the um, public sector. How prepped up is the government? We all we all understand that the private sector is well prepped yeah, up for school. Well. Okay, but not all of them because not all teachers know what you're supposed to do, okay, if we call a spade a spade. But in this context, what about public schools? How prepared are the government, is the government to um, educate and make sure that the children are well catered for and are safe, as well as the educators during um, school resumption? Well, you want to get me in the corner. I think um, for, I can only comment about the private sector. The mm. public sector are meant to be regulated by the Department of the Quality Assurance. Okay. That is headed by um, Mrs. Seriki. Now, that particular department and the, at the ministry is expected to go around public schools mm -hmm. as well as private schools to see that they comply to the protocols. But in a situation where probably the uh, at present, at present, I know that in uh, in the state secretariat. Mm. If you have read, they, have, they were given, uh, they said that they can only come to the secretariat twice a week now. If workers on level 1 to 14 are not working, mm. who will go around public schools? Okay, well, let's mm. take a call from Auchi, uh, Auchi Abi. <laughs> I said Auchi. Auchi. Thank you for calling. I didn't get the name. Hello? Hello? Okay, so sorry, sir. Go ahead. So, Hello? yeah, go, okay. go ahead. Thank you for calling. Let's hear what you have to say. In one minute, please. Hello? Okay, let's end the call. Okay. So, if, if level 1 to 14 are presently restricted to visual, uh, virtual work, learning, work, um, work mm -hmm. at home, mm -hmm. and then uh, um, if you look at the number of the public schools that we have, mm -hmm. who, go around, who will go around to monitor mm -hmm. whatever they have so, in place? Let I, me come let's, to let's, let's, let's do this. There's something that actually struck me. We all feel that the private sector is prepped up. We don't feel that the public sector is prepped up. What if there is a pandemic in the school, if there is a breakout 
in the school. That means that the school will not be able to handle it. Um, however, <laughs> I, I, however, I know that the, the public schools have also they also have a staggered program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me take the national president. Sorry, of uh, NAPS. I think is your yes. president that has called in. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for calling. Fantastic. Let's hear what you have to say, please, in one minute. Give me power bank there. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> power bank. Okay, the I think today we're having right. troubles with the phone lines. Hello. The how are you, everyone? Good evening. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's me. nice contributing in this program. Thank Good evening, you for my calling. president. Can we hear what you have to say in one minute? I, I want to thank you so much for looking at um, the opening of school in Nigeria. Okay. I want to. And um, I want to say that it has been a very um, challenging period for all stakeholders within the school. It has been a very challenging in the sense that um, both private and public schools are beginning to look at how to look at the safety of the children and how to balance safety with livelihood. And um, livelihood and life, I meant to say, I want to say that the teachers are also quite um, overwhelmed with uh, preparing for how to teach the children and how to also safeguard their lives. Okay. Government has been so helpful in this direction. Stakeholders also have been on their toes. I want to thank um, Yusuf Alaka for that great representation there. And I want to call on all parents to own this fight. It mm -hmm. is for all of us. Mm -hmm. We must own responsibility of curbing the spread of this virus. Parents must lead must be a role model in hygiene within the home and must prepare their children for school. Okay. Remember that um, they cannot share food item in the school, neither can they purchase one. Mm -hmm. So we have to wake up early, prepare the children for school and remind them about what they need to know about COVID-19. Okay. COVID-19 is real and every one of us must keep safe. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank for you. This opportunity. Come. Thank you so much, um, Yomi Odubela, for, for the call. Um, I want to hear what Dr. Dr. Yeah. Vera James has to say, because I was thinking, you know, it is okay for us to, what if we've done everything, right? The children are wearing their nose masks and all of that. Time for feeding. Because we know that they must have a meal in school. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you see this playing out amidst COVID-19? Because I know a lot of schools have shut down their, their, their um, so, um, kitchen food, services. kitchen services. Mm -hmm. Parents must mandate the children to bring. But you know, some children, they still need the teachers to help them. So how do we manage that? Dr. Vera, quickly, like in one minute, because we really ran out of time. Okay, okay. So um, that, this, this is one of my own concerns. And that's why I'm not so... Um, I can't say schools should resume or not to resume. That's not for, for me to decide. But um, for that, we would advise that parents prepare your meals. I was telling my children, my children usually will eat school meals. But if they have to go back to school, but they won't go back to school yet, they, we may not be able to get food from school anymore. Even though I know that there are quite a number of schools that still serve meals in school. So I like what the, the president has said, that we... Uh, they are advised not to serve meals, but schools are still serving meals. So we still have a problem. I still want us to remember that we are not ready for resumption. And even if we have resumed, we should, we should do so much within our power. I like what he said, we must all be responsible. We must do so much in our power. So parents, pack your children's food. You teach your children not to share cups, Absolutely. like what they used to teach us back in those days. Mm. And it's, it's coming life now because it's not, um, we also sorry, need Dr. to Vera, strike a balance. We have a call again. Sorry, I'm so sorry to cut you. Um, I think it's from uh, Auchi, um, Alio, I, I, I believe. Thank you for calling. Let us hear what you have to say in one minute, please. Uh, that's the concern, Dr. Vera. So you were trying to conclude that because that will be your final point. I like the part of parents' responsibility, right? Because a lot of work has to come from the parents. Mm -hmm. You can't just dump it on the schools. Yes. Go ahead, Dr. Vera. And the teachers. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you pack your children's <laughs> meal and ensure children eat their own food. They don't share these things. I mean, these are things that we need to sensitize our children at home. The teachers also should take control of that information as well because they are the ones with the children in the classroom. All right? It's, it's quite important. But again, my fear, sorry to take us back to what we're saying. If a child comes down with COVID-19 in a school, what happens? So one, one of the good things that some schools are doing, I'm not sure um, how many right now, is the putting children in bubbles, you know, if you're in primary one, everything you have to do in school will be primary one. So you have, you're not going to be mixing with any other child. So should you have coronavirus in, um, issues, 
everybody in that year group would be asked to isolate, unlike what they said initially. But the truth now is they have siblings. So when we have things like that, and it happens to two or three families, again, we are still going to look at another lockdown. Okay. <laughs> so we need to be sure that we are ready. Ready, yeah. Dr. Everybody Vera. Everybody must take be responsibility. Ready. Thank you so much, Dr. Vera. Thank School you so leaders much. take responsibility. Parents take responsibility. Absolutely. I have another call quickly. In one minute, can we hear what you have to say? Just in one minute, please. From Abuja. Hello, are you there? Okay, I think today is... Uh, so, final question, please. Okay. We didn't even take Timmy's final question. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. What about school buses? How do you think the um, um, private sector, the private sector is handling school buses? And if you have to advise parents, um, parents, um, the educators, and the pupils or the learners that are probably watching, what would you tell them to do, basically? Thank you very much, Jesse. Um... On the school buses, there are protocols for school buses too. If you have to run your school buses, one of it is that you must have the children must not be more than three on the on the on the Who seat. Is that profitable for goodness sake for a business person? So, 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 and even in the front seat, in the front seat, there mustn't be any child there. Just park the back there. Mm -hmm. eh? The bus assistants must ensure that before the children enter the bus, mm -hmm. they must. They, um, you must sanitize their hand, and by the time they are going down, you must also sanitize their hand, and they must be wearing their nose covered, and uh, there's nothing that should bring the two or three children together. How okay. Realistic is That's this. not realistic. Yes. Tammy, let me take your final comment, then How we can wrap up the show. <laughs> Okay, so um, ooh, I mean, I, I enjoyed being a part of this conversation. My question initially was about training of teachers, but having listened to perspectives, I see here that it's not just about training of teachers. Exactly. It's training of everybody who Absolutely. is involved, and that includes, and all the like the, um, the doctor yes. mentioned, that includes the security person, the boss assistant, everyone. So this conversation has really opened it my eyes to that. I appreciate I think so. all of our guests, both of our guests <laughs> for, you know, such an Thank enlightening so conversation. Much, yes. And I Thank hope you. that the stakeholders... We have run out of time, Timmy. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Vera. Thank you so much. I mean, I thought we were going to... <laughs> we never have enough time here. All right, so Waze was birthed from the need to inspire, inform, influence lives towards action. And this year, we're starting our series our focus on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. So if you are a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots for us to be able to give to job seekers. Now, if you are a job seeker, keep watching Waze and tell all your friends to keep their eyes on Waze. Now, in case you missed today's quote again, here it is. The true measure of a man is not how he behaves in moments of comfort and convenience, but how he stands at times of controversy and challenges. That's from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So we'll see how we would stand in the midst of COVID. You know? So we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. We'll have a special episode tomorrow. You don't want to miss it. See you then. <laughs>